Gaurav sir, you need to unmute. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Namaskaram, uh, everyone, and thanks, Ashok ji. Yes, uh, we will <clears throat> continue. Today we have the third session, and this should be the uh, last on this topic uh, on blood type. So let me start with a small story. And earlier this week, I was uh, like I was talking about functional medicine. So I was with the new dentist, so not the regular dentist visit, but it was part of the functional medicine. And she was talking to me about, and she started asking, okay, what's your blood type and diet and all that. So I never imagined, but I just asked out of curiosity, are you going towards eat as per your blood type? And she said, yeah. And I said, okay, now don't tell me you will refer to, you know, Dr. Peter's book, the one we are referring uh, in our session. And she said, yes. And she had that actually in her office, which I didn't know. So it was uh, a very pleasant surprise. Uh, I never thought uh, I would uh, come across so quickly. I mean, this topic was uh, just a couple of months old for me and started and digging and uh, exploring. And here you find a person, a professional who's usually not talking about such thing, but uh, you come across. So what it means is the moment you align yourself to the universe, universe start showing indications to you. That's what it means. Uh, before <clears throat> whole life never came across, uh, right? Uh, who would talk about this uh, topic, book, or this. The moment I got into this, within three months, all of a sudden you find people around you who will also talk about this or promote this kind of, uh, you can say, lifestyle. So <clears throat> now we will start mm -hmm. uh, sharing. And uh, it is... Uh, something which is uh, very interesting. So today we will certainly recap because some of you masters may be uh, joining um, first time in the last couple of weeks. So if you have missed the previous sessions on blood types, uh, eat right for your type. That's the book and there are some other literature, there are other books, other, there are some videos as well. Uh, so uh, this one, we will recap and then we will get into some details of the diet part. So we are not getting into full on detail because for that you may have to read the book. If you are, uh, if you like the topic, if you are interested, you may pick uh, first. If you don't know, certainly I would highly recommend find out your blood type. Uh, not a difficult thing. And if you know, or once you find out, then yes, you can get into more details of that type. And then you can say, okay, what I can pick, what I can live with. And it's not like if you have to leave certain food items, what are you gonna eat? No, the list is too big. You will still have lots of stuff that you can eat. So don't worry. So <clears throat> let's start from the start. So blood type, why do we talk about this? We are not talking about based on the emergency situation. That in case if you are in an emergency where you need to receive blood or in a situation where you are helping someone else who is in emergency and donating blood, then you should know your blood type. Now, doctors will still test your blood. They will not just go blindly because you say I am such and such blood type. But that is one thing, which is emergency. But that's not the point we are discussing here. What we are talking here is your health, your well-being. What you are inside is what body reflects outside. So if you want to look good, you want to work on your weight management, your health, your memory, your lifespan, well, you have to be good from inside. So you just don't want a bigger or longer lifespan, you want a healthier one. So question is, how can we ensure that we live not only longer, but healthier? This is one of the things which contributes heavily towards that. There are four types of blood. If you see the population across the world, O, 
A, B type and A, B type. Yes, there are RH factors plus negative. So you could be any of the these type, either positive or negative. That means O plus or negative, and similarly the other three. So RH factor is slightly different, which does impact uh, in certain uh, factors. However, the blood type O is O, doesn't matter positive O or negative O. Uh, when we talk about the factors, the five main factors we'll talk about. If we look back and see, okay, why we have four blood types or why only four types? Why not more, why not less? So though, if we go back 40,000 years or so when this whole journey started of human, uh, you can see the history, everybody was O. So all the humans at that time, uh, you know, we were all O type when the migration started from Africa and the first it went to Asian region, you know, Middle East and that area. Then the blood type A came into existence, which was about 15 to 25,000 years ago. From that region, next higher level of migration was more towards North, the colder climate. So by, when they were in Asia, they started agriculture. So when A type blood came into existence, the major change was that not only the hunting lifestyle, which was dominating 40,000 years ago when O type was there. Now 15 to 25,000 years, this is the time when we had agriculture into existence. Some animals were as pet. So food was available, longer duration. It's not like you hunt and eat, otherwise you don't eat. Big lifestyle change, blood group A came into existence. Further migration towards northern side, Himalayan region, colder climate. So from hot, they went to cold, environmental changes, a lot of other factors changed. New blood type came into existence, B type, which was about 10 to 15,000 years ago. So you can say in last 10,000 years, nothing much changed. Only in the last 500 to 1,000 years, new blood type AB came into existence because again, there were a lot of crisscross, a lot of movements. And we know as a history in the last 2000 years, there were a lot of, you can say either expansion of kingdoms and whatnot, wars and a lot of movement, a lot of migration. So this is the reason why we have these four blood types, uh, the timeline, if you want to see, and the major differences. There are two factors which bring the differences. One is antibodies, one is antigen. So blood type is one antigen and antibodies are, you know, these are our soldiers, protect us from different infection and whatnot, keep us healthy. So blood type A has anti-B antibodies. If you have anti-B, that means you cannot take the blood type A and give it to a person who's blood type B because it has anti-B antibodies. That person, the body will not like it. If you give someone with group B, some blood with group A. No, not at all, very dangerous. Similarly, the other way around, you don't want to take blood type B and give it infused into a person of blood type A. Not good, risky. If you have a type a, B, that's a different story. No antibodies. So you can receive, you can receive from A, you can receive from B because it doesn't matter. But you cannot donate because antigens, it has both. A and B both. Group type O has both antibodies, anti-A, anti-B. Cannot receive from either but it can donate, it's a universal donor group O. So group O has no antigens and that's why it's a universal donor. So that's how it is decided which group can go or can be donated to which type. And this way, 
hospitals keep track that, okay, in which situation it is safe, in which situation it is not. Now, lactans is one thing which not many people are aware of. Lactans, this is one big factor which really creates a lot of havoc in our health. You may have heard the name leaky gut. It really, you know, creates some kind of holes you may imagine in our gut, whereas uh, from that, not only the good digestive part, but the not so good, which, you know, toxins that you want to get away from your body, you want to discard, that also goes through and it goes inside your system. So that layer is just one cell thick. And these lactins, they create holes. Once they create hole, you are compromised. The more toxins stay in our body, the worse it is for us. Now, lectins are there in lots of foods. You know, we commonly know gluten, which could, because of the allergy, people say, oh, I'm allergic to gluten and all. That is also one type of lectin. Lectins are there in nightshade family like eggplant, capsicums and all. It's in tomato, skin in the seeds, lentil. So there is a proper way of cooking where you can reduce. In some case, you can eliminate. But like wheat, you cannot get rid of lectins from wheat. So understanding lectins is really important in today's world because not much is being discussed because of obvious reasons. But if we are interested in our health, we should know about lactins. So masters, I highly recommend the more you get opportunity, please know more about it. This way you'll be able to decide what food items you should reduce, eliminate, what you should eat more. And once you do that, you will also understand why certain food goes well with some blood type and not so good with the other blood type. So now five main factors that we will we have discussed and we'll go detail in terms of food diet is the blood type diet, the particular diet for this particular blood type, weight loss factor, supplements, exercise profile, and personality question. These five factors vary blood type to blood type. And you may have three different levels. So it's not like just one thing or two way, but there are three way we can look at different things in any particular category. Something that is beneficial, something that is highly beneficial in the sense, something very good. You want more and more, it's like medicine. Something which is neutral means, okay, you're eating it as a food. You still need it. You can't just have only highly beneficial items. An item that you must avoid. It's no good at all for you. So avoid. Now, the blood type diet is based on your blood type, which has come over thousands of years. So it's not just random thing. Imagine billions of people and there are only four different types and we know the percentages also. So O is the highest followed by A, then B and then AB. So pretty much 45% of the world is blood type O. So you can say how many, like how many billions of people are blood type O. So it is coming over thousands of years, a lot of genetics involved, a lot of information in it. And we know that how the timeline progressed and we have new blood types based on major changes. One more change was when, you know, the breastfeeding was uh, reduced and bottle feeding developed, especially in the uh, developing, uh, you know, this habits going on and throughout the world. And that really makes another big difference because that's when your immune system, your, you know, the body is getting the first protection and first development. And we have compromised that also. So we think one diet can fit all? No. We miss the people part, the characteristic of people. Different blood types have different characteristics. So you cannot say one diet will fit all. 
So when we are talking of the diet, there are multiple things. Most important are, as you can see here, 14 items from dairy product, oil, nuts, seeds, cereal, fruits, vegetable, juice, herbals, you know, different beverages, all these. Now, if you go into the book and you can go into each item in detail and find out the three category, what you should have more, what you may have as a neutral and what you should avoid. When we talk of weight loss, weight loss means it is not a question of, okay, I don't want to go to gym, what can I do? No, this is for your health, this is for your optimum performance of your body. That means what should I eat as per my blood type that will support maintaining the optimum weight. That means I'm not gaining too much and I'm not losing too much. There are some items, if you eat, you lose weight. There are some items for that specific blood good, you know, uh, will go up. So blood, uh, your weight can go up, can come down, depending on the food items. So accordingly, you can plan your diet. because ultimately we want optimum performance. That means it's a balance. You are eating as per your body shape, height and size, weight. Then supplementary advisory. Supplement is in today's world, you will see that everybody is having something or the other, herbal, natural, whatever. Some people say I'm very low in vitamin D. Somebody's worried about B12. Somebody's worried about something, calcium and all kinds of things. So it is a big industry. However, there are certain specific supplements for a specific blood type. And then you can see accordingly and at least there is a rationale, there is a logic. So, just like food, it's not like every nutrition will gonna work with all type of blood in the similar way, no. And we will see in each blood type, what may work, what may not work. Similarly for exercise, in certain blood type, you will see you may require a rigorous exercise and some may be relaxing one, some may be a combination. So this is really important that again, we are aware and we do things which is as per our blood type. And in characteristic, you know, you look at personality, your attitude, behavior, and then we try to align it with your blood type. That means you are aligning it with the universe. And this is important. So now let's look into each blood type and we'll get into detail. So first the blood type O, uh, percentage wise uh, and age wise, in very critical oldest. And then most people have this blood type. So what are the strength? Two major, digestive tract, immune system, strong. Now, this is the time when it was, the humans were dependent on the hunting meat eater. And that's why the hardy digestive tract, that means you have very digestive tract kind of aligned towards meat eating. Immune system at that time, there was no facilities, you know, there was no hospital or any such thing. And, uh, a lot of danger around you, wild animals and whatnot. So they needed a strong immune system. Natural defense against infection, because again, this is, you're talking about the oldest one. So long time ago when there was no such thing as, you know, a doctor or some kind of hospital or any kind of such institute. So you have to survive on your own. You have to maintain that means a lot of running around movement. So metabolism needs to be good, efficient, high. And weakness, intolerant to the new dietary or environmental condition. 
because at that time it was just one kind of set of environment and all where people were living before they started migration and the a type blood came into existence so intolerant to new dietary it was a very like you know in a straight line kind of situation an immune system could be overactive and it can attack itself again in order to have a strong immune system sometime it could be in overdrive mode and that's what happens when your own immune system impacts yourself or in other words hurt yourself so medical risk uh, coming out of this uh, some are like blood clotting disorders inflammatory diseases low thyroid production ulcer allergies these kind of common one now it's not like if you have o type and tomorrow you start worrying oh i will have this or i will have that no it's a probability based so it's not like o means you have to have this it is that okay these are the most probable one that means you may take precaution against certain things so diet profile meat eater as we said that's what the o group was and still uh, it is aligned genetically towards that high protein diet though we know that the vegetarianism and uh, the reason we promote vegetarianism is not just it is healthier and in fact it provides you more protein it's a myth that you have to eat non veg in order to have your protein intake but anyway this is the genetic side the coming you know when it was meat eating society and that's why you will see in the profile you will have lots of meat fish and you know all this but it's not like that's the only thing you have vegetable fruits and limited grain beans or legumes so <clears throat> you will see there are even if it is limited of certain things but yes supplement uh, b vitamin k calcium iodine so yes there are which you will find very common more frequently and for exercise if you are o type you need a little rigorous exercise intense exercise so you know like running jogging and um, sometimes people do weight lifting or whatever it is like you know something which is intense there are certain things you may want to avoid there are certain things uh, you know you like obviously the meat and all we said is a uh, uh, naturally aligned with this o type and avoiding is wheat corn lentil cabbage cauliflower so these are just some terms so it's not like if you eat cauliflower it's going to hurt you or it's going to go against you but it's a question of if you are eating something every day if it is in the avoid list you may want to avoid certain things or at least reduce the frequency so this way you can see there is there are factors for each blood type which you can learn and adapt change your lifestyle and be al more aligned towards your blood type if certain things by avoiding you can become healthier then why not let's talk about the strength of blood type a now we know that this was uh, this came into existence when the agriculture came into existence so this adapts very well to dietary and environmental changes because that's how it came into existence so if there is variation in dietary condition environmental condition this blood type adapts well and immune system will preserve and metabolize nutrients more easily weakness is sensitive digestive tract and immune system vulnerable open to microbial invasion so you do have adaptability however your digestive tract could be sensitive immune system open for attack you know microbial and all that so you have to be careful just know the range and then work accordingly that means you know that okay you have to take care of yourself from these 
potential, not that it's a must potential risk. And under medical condition, you have some heart issues, uh, anemia or type one diabetes. These are the common ones that type A may come across. So you have to be again, just take precaution and ensure that, you know, you kind of do the right things. When we talk about diet profile, uh, again, from the author, you can have different books, not just about one book talking about all the theory and also details about the diet plan. But there are specific books, so say blood type A, and then now you have all the personalized uh, cookbook. So like you see here as an example, this is for type A, you can have similar cookbook for all other types, the remaining three. And then you can say, okay, uh, vegetables, tofu, seafood, grains, beans, pulse. So there is a big list. And then you can pick from there and you can say, okay, this is what I like. This is what I should eat. This is good for my health. You will find certain things to avoid from weight loss perspective, certain things you want to add. So you want to avoid meat, dairy products, you know, wheat, blood type A, vegetarian, so has to be veggie, don't eat meat. I mean, in general for any blood type we say, but for A, for sure, you have extra reason. You can uh, add certain things in your uh, diet from weight loss perspective, vegetable oils, soya food, vegetables, pineapple, things like those. So these are some of the items that will certainly help you. Supplements, and there are certain supplements you will see it repeating. Certain things like milk thistle. Milk thistle is uh, again, natural and you will find it. Yes, vitamin B12, vitamin C, vitamin E. So there are supplements which commonly you will see that okay in blood type A uh, mostly recommended because um, you may find the levels low. Now, uh, there are th these natural versions, so certainly this will help. And when it comes to exercise, calming exercises. So you saw in for group type O, very you know intense, but here for type A, very calming. So you're talking about something like yoga, tai chi, things like those. Very calming, very slow movements. No jerk, no fast movements. Then comes type B, strength, strong immune system, and versatile adaptation to dietary and environmental changes, balanced nervous system. So you see here, you have type B coming into existence when further movement more towards colder climate and all that, and then B came into existence. So when certain, you know, hard work was done to bring this into existence, you can imagine there will be a linkage. So that is why any change in diet or environmental factor, yeah, this one is very versatile adaptation. Weakness, no natural weaknesses, but imbalance. So imbalances uh, can create uh, situation in the body. So natural uh, weakness when we are talking about is coming in directly from imbalance. So autoimmune and all those breakdowns and you know rare viruses. So one has to be careful, but take care of the balancing. Balance between your left and right side. Balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So medical risk, type one diabetes, right? Chronic fatigue syndrome, autoimmune diseases. So these are the things that, again, not a must, but most probable. And from the diet uh, profile perspective, yeah, balanced omnivore, uh, trying to balance between the meat and the veggie, uh, dairy product, grains, pulses, fruit, vegetables. So 
this one will certainly uh, you have again list of what to avoid what you can add in terms of weight loss so again corn lentils and all peanuts buckwheat or wheat so there are items that you may want to avoid there are items which is okay it's good lots of green uh, you know egg or whatever so if you eat then yes these are the things that will help you and when you can, when you talk about supplements you have magnesium you know chinchiko there are a lot of things that you will say that the only place kind of thing exercise is moderate physical but mental balance so again you are you are having the physical exercise and mental balance both so you are talking about whether it's cycling and hiking at the same time you know you have tennis or swimming which is uh, swimming is a very good form of exercise which is very balanced with respect to there is no jerk kind of thing minimize that one and when you do something where you need physical and mental balance beautiful and now let's look at the fourth blood type ab so let's look at the strength and the weaknesses designed for modern condition why ab is just 500 to 1000 years old so you can imagine this one just came into existence very recently so again a lot of factors for new blood type to come into existence and uh, so it is concerning modern condition but also highly tolerant immune system and combining the benefit of a and b that's how you're getting ab so you do get the weakness that way as well so sensitive digestive tract and tendency for over tolerant immune system so this is like we said no good because it could be over reactive oh sorry and it uh, reacts negatively to a like and b like condition so one has to be aware of that medical risk again there is a lot of factors but again the common ones so diet mixed diet in moderation that is the one common uh, rule of thumb yes uh, because it does have influence of um, you know the b type you have meat seafood dairy products whereas uh, you know you do have the veins uh, the vegetarian side the grain pulses and all that and uh, one thing is there in this uh, blood type uh, you will see because of the b the dairy product is uh, easily manageable and weight loss again want to avoid red meat and then there are seeds corn buckwheat you know all those things again it's still in the avoid list what you want to add more tofu is seafood dairy product green pineapple so again in general what we are saying here is uh, go green and uh, you know those kind of foods which helps supplements you will see again some of the like vitamin c milk thistle and things like that uh yeah, common in ab and then exercise calming centering exercise yoga tai chi so this is not where you go full on like intensive and all and try to combine with moderate physical such as hiking cycling tennis so so if you combine these it really works very well so masters uh, this was uh, like uh, all four blood groups a little more in detail that okay what examples we can say to add or uh, to minimize uh, what kind of behavior what kind of uh, you know nature you expect from people having different types of blood type and once we know this and we can uh, change our lifestyle accordingly it really helps in uh, first avoiding a lot of health issues and second if you have one then to overcome that easily
uh, you have a big list. Again, you can go through the book directly uh, or other resources where you can find exact more detail about your blood type of any of those categories because we just saw the glimpse of it. Uh, like there are 14 items or more in the book for diet part. You can see all three levels of each item, each level. So there will be a lot of information. But idea is again, not to overwhelm, not to just, you know, put yourself uh, under all this burden. Start with something that is manageable and then make your uh, way through in the sense that start and slowly and slowly intensify or increase. Don't just jump on and kind of get disheartened or overwhelmed. So masters, if you have any question about today's session, or you want to share your experience, please feel free to unmute yourself. If you are following any such thing, you have certain experiment or your own result. Yeah, please share. Yes, Vindya ji, please unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you, Gaurav sir. Uh, I missed your oh. sessions last couple of weeks. I was traveling, but I did not realize blood type was this important. <laughs> I, as I grew up, I think I in india we all needed to know our blood type and so i remember i think it was there but when i came to us nobody asked me and it just i don't know where the records are so i think faintly i might have i might remember but i don't know exactly um and every time i tried to donate blood here they would say oh you travel to india international so you have to wait and then it just went on like that so i couldn't so even then i couldn't tell my blood type so it's interesting to know that knowing all the history you gave, I didn't know at all, like, you know, O was the oldest and then AB is the latest. And that we have to follow diet based on our blood type. So uh, it's very, what is the book you're talking about? I would be interested. Uh, the book is uh, like the very first slide. It has a photo in it. Eat right for your type. That is the title of the book, Eat Right for Your Type. And it is by Dr. Peter. Okay. And uh, there may be other books, but uh, this is what I'm referring to. So even lactose intolerance, all that is based on blood type. So all the people who have certain blood type are more prone to lactose intolerance. Like for example, type B, has the most forgiving. That means they can digest the milk uh, better than A. A, no. So uh, this way it does impact. That means you will find that even with siblings, that how come, you know, one, uh, you will find a person is uh, able to handle certain things, whether it's vegetable milk or whatever other person may not be. It may be one factor could be the blood type. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I noticed with age also it changes, so I wasn't sure if that, uh, okay, okay, so blood type also adds Correct. as a factor. And okay. it is one of the factors. We never say that is the only factor. So yes, there may be other factors coming into play, but certainly uh, you will see, and that's why every information has to be, you know, judged with respect to other factors, but certainly it's a big factor. 
And going back to the previous, sometime back, you had talked about all these um, vata, pitta, and all those uh, nature, right? Uh, you said you can find out. So if we have to go to an Ayurvedic doctor, is that what you said? To find out about vata, pitta, kapha, yes, you can do it with an Ayurvedic doctor. Uh, if you do your biovel scan, it gives a reading of that. There are other instruments which directly give reading of uh, your uh, and these three doshas. So those instruments are also there. But obviously the best is if you know uh, somebody who's really good, like we used to say, uh, with that experience, no instrument can come close. So it could be better in India if I go, and when I'm in India, it's better to find someone there and get it done. Yeah, sure. And uh, if you are here, uh, not going to go very anytime soon, then still here, you'll find some good naturopath doctors who can still give you. So it's not like we cannot find. It's just if we have an option, then yeah, why not? But there are very good uh, doctors here as well, or practitioner. Thank you. You always amaze me with the amount of knowledge you have. I don't know. It's like one after the other. You have so much like you know, depth of knowledge. So thank you for sharing. Thank you, Vindyaji. If it make uh, you know sense for to others, if it is of any use, then that motivates me to keep digging, keep researching into new topics, and make use of it for myself and bring it for others' benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. So master, uh, anyone else uh, has any question or sharing before we go for meditation? Yes, Ram Krishnamurti. Please unmute yourself. Um, okay. Uh, Ram you are unmuted. Now you did, okay. You know, unmute just the Kale then, so that's why I thought, let me sign language and then get it unmuted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you are unmuted, sir. We can listen. Thank you. Thank you. So I could not do it myself. So yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Garu, just one question is that, could you throw some light on this universal donor for type O, whereas the type A, B, and AB are to be specific to that category only? Um, is there something that binds the... Uh, the evolution or something to do with the genetics, I would appreciate if you can throw some light on it. Sure. So Ramakrishnaji, it is uh, two factors. One is antigen and antibodies. So every blood type have certain antibodies and certain antigens. So type A has anti-B antibodies. That means you cannot give type A to type B, otherwise it will explode when it goes there because it has anti-B, it will be fighting with its own blood. So it's good for A, but you cannot give it to B. And similarly, vice versa means B has anti-A antibodies, so you cannot give B to A. So that is a restriction. Now, when it comes to AB, they have none when it comes to antibodies. So they can receive from A also, B also. Mm -hmm. So they are free, they can take from both. However, they cannot give, they can receive but cannot give because they have both antigens. But when it comes to O, they cannot receive but they can give because now they don't have any antigen. They have both antibodies, but not antigens. So that's why O is a universal donor. O can give to A, O can give to B, but if O has to receive, then it has to receive from another O only. So based on these two factors, it is decided which blood type can be given to which blood type. 
And within a family, again, you could have mixed scenarios. So it's not like everyone will be of one blood type, depending on the father and the mother and which one is dominant. So yeah, it is interesting always to uh, get the test done and to know which blood type you are. So uh, sometimes, just to, that leads me to think another thought is sometimes the marriages cannot be performed based upon the blood type also. Sometimes the blood, uh, one, I mean, husband's blood doesn't accept the wife's blood or something like that. Uh, the effect would be on the progeny, not exactly on the people who cohabitate, but it is the effect will be on the progeny. Could you please explain it to the... So they, there, uh, the RH factor comes into play uh, when we talk about positive and negative. So then there is there are certain combinations which are not good for the couple point of view because then it is impacting, as you said, to their child. And uh, then they will have issue with the child. So that is what they look into. That is the RH factor perspective. So you have to look uh, that information. And indirectly, I think when they do the genompathy match, if, if people believe in those who do it, it, it you know, you get that uh, kind of matching from there because generally nobody checks the blood group that what is, you know, the, <laughs> <laughs> now more than genompathy, then they should be one factor for your own health benefit. <laughs> So it is advisable to have the blood type verification uh, along with Janmapatari Kundali matching. I would say yes. Okay, good. But why that happens, sir? Would you be able to explain um, yeah. any other factors that why that mismatch can happen? Uh, little that I know is it is combination of uh, of main thing coming from the RH factor and then which which RH like which blood group which uh, is just like you know we say okay uh, this is a universal donor this is a universal uh, receiver yeah. and all that but it is the RH factor which is more important than the group blood right. group itself that combination which combination you are going okay. thank you thank you so much welcome Yes, Vindyaji. I just wanted to comment what Ramakrishna said. I asked it, brought a thought to me. I, there was this uh, certain long back, I used to watch some TV show. A certain culture, I think in Turkish, something, they, while getting married, in, they have to submit their blood type also. So that was interesting that, uh, you know, they checked that uh, to get the certificate at least. You know. Wow. So at least some part of the world, they are intelligent, they believe in it. <laughs> I don't know. And, and I don't know all the details and facts, but this is what I'm just so thought of. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Interesting. Okay, masters. So then we can start meditation if there is no more uh, question or sharing. So let's relax our body. And we'll start meditation. So First, just with the eyes closed, body relaxed, we'll do seven rounds of deep breathing. Those who know alone belong pranayam, they can do that. If you're not familiar, just do deep breathing. So slow inhale and slow exhale. Slow inhale and slow exhale as slow as comfortable to you. So let's do seven cycle.
masters. After completing seven cycles, keep your eyes closed, don't open it, but start breathing normally. Now, let's relax our body. So relax your face, relax your neck, your shoulders. Keep your spine straight, however, it should be fully relaxed. No stretch, no any kind of stress in your backbone, in your spine. And relax your hands, your legs. Now, for one minute, let's feel as if our affirmation has come true. Feel the feeling, the emotion, how you would feel when your affirmation has come true. So one minute, just feel it. And imagine it has come true, your affirmation, and feel that great feeling of joy, happiness, gratitude, what you would feel when your affirmation has come true. Now, we'll start observing our breath. So from here on, no more thoughts, no feeling, no emotion. We will start observing our breath as we inhale, as we exhale. Now, during meditation, if you get stuck with any thought, it's okay, don't fight, don't feel bad. Just come out of that thought and start observing your breath again.
masters let's rub our palms together place the fingers on your eyes for five seconds five four three two one zero slowly very slowly open your eyes and come back to your normal self Take your time, open your eyes. So thanks everyone, masters. I'm making it a group session. We'll meet next Wednesday. Namaskar.